What shall we render to the Lord for all God's bounty to us? We will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. Welcome to worship. It is wonderful to see all of you here. I'm Tara Reck, pastor of Anchorage Presbyterian Church. We had a wonderful rally day celebration this morning as we kicked off our Sunday school year. Next week during worship, we will recognize all of our Sunday school teachers. Next week and the Sunday afterwards, we will have services at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. back in our sanctuary. This morning, we are celebrating the birth of Molly Claire O'Reilly, who was born yesterday. She is the daughter of Emily and Kevin O'Reilly, granddaughter of Karen and Frank Steltenpole, and great-granddaughter of Rich and Peg Ravel. Let us now continue in worship with a call to worship. Come, let us sing to Yahweh. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into the divine presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to God with songs of praise. It is good to give you thanks, O Yahweh, to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your steadfast love in the morning and your faithfulness by night, to the music of the lyre and harp, the melody of the lyre. For you, O God, have made us glad by your work. At the works of your hands we sing for joy. Let us pray. God of love, you teach us a life journey that calls us to deny what is unhealthy and unloving. Lead us in that pathway. Awaken us to an ever abund new abundance that is ours through your word in the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Our first hymn is number 14, For the Beauty of the Earth. of God's amazing love is this. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. 
So let us confess our sin before God and our neighbor with confidence. Let us pray. Holy God, in the face of sin, our greatest enemy, we call to you for help. You know our fault before we speak. Forgive us for what we have done in opposition to your will. Forgive us for the things we have not undertaken and for which we know are wrong. We have not loved our neighbors as we ought. We have denied our dependence on you. Lead us away from this grief and sorrow. Save us so that we may fulfill our vows to you and attend to the needs of your people. Amen. Who is in a position to condemn us? Only Christ, and Christ died for us. Christ prays for us. Christ reigns in power for us. Sisters and brothers, with one such as Christ as our advocate, we can boldly declare the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Owe no one anything except to love one another, for the one who loves has fulfilled the law. The commandments are summed up in this word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Amen. You may be seated. Today and for the next couple of weeks, we will be talking about the different parts of worship service. And so for our children's sermon, we're going to stay seated because we're all going to participate. Can you hear me okay? Okay, good. So there are four parts of worship. The first part we've just ended and we're about to go into the second. The first part is called gathering. What does gather mean? Somebody yell it out. Gather means to what? Come together. So that's exactly what we've done. We brought our chairs and our bicycles and we've come together to worship. And we've sung a song, we've had a prayer, we heard a response, and we're just about to hear something read for part two. What is read during the second part? Somebody? Children? Scripture. Scripture. So between part one and part two is when we normally have the children's sermon. So I'm going to teach us a song, and you might know it already. So, and we're going to le uh, learn some sign language. So it's, Lord, listen to your children praying. How many know that? Well, we're going to know it in a second. So let's learn it while we learn the sign language. So everyone make an L with your hand this way. And an L goes from your shoulder down to your waist. Sort of a Lord. Yeah, everybody do that. Lord. Mm -hmm. Listen. Children. Praying. Now let's sing that much. I think we're in. Just the first chord. Yeah, let's just sing that. Lord, listen to your children pray. Yeah, good. Now the second phrase is, Lord, send your spirit in this place. Try that with me. Lord, send your spirit in this place. And the music is, Lord, send your spirit in this place. And then we repeat the first part. Lord, listen to your children pray. Then we, say, we all know love. Send us love. Love. And then power. I made it up, but we're already there. So that's like a power symbol. Send us grace. Mm -hmm. Right? So it's send us love, send us power, send us grace. Yeah. Let's try the whole thing.
And at the end of the first part of worship, before we go into the second, there's a prayer, and it's called the Prayer for Illumination. We'll talk about that next week, but you're going to hear it now. Thank you so much. children would like to go with Miss Talbert um, for Agape Kids, you are welcome to do so at this time. Okay, let us pray. Holy Spirit, open our hearts to the story of your love. Open our minds to new ways of knowing you. Open our doors to all whom you would welcome. Amen. The purpose of the book of James is to help Christians live in the world filled with grace. As such, it has more in common with Proverbs and other wisdom literature in the Old Testament than, the, than with the New Testament letters of Paul. James is not impressed by people who brag about their God, their faith in God, or their understanding of spiritual matters. The wisdom that interests James has nothing to do with having good ideas and everything to do with living good lives. In today's reading, the writer warns of the idle, destructive gossip in the Christian community. Listen for God's word in James chapter 3, verses 1 through 12. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers and sisters, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. For all of us make many mistakes. Anyone who makes no mistakes in speaking is perfect able to keep the whole body in check with a bridle. If we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we guide their whole bodies. Or look at ships. Though they are so large it takes strong winds to drive them, they are guided by a very small rudder wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great exploits. How great a forest is set ablaze by a small fire and the tongue is a fire. The tongue is placed among our members as a world of iniquity. It stains the whole body, sets on fire the cycle of nature, and is itself set on fire by hell. For every species of beast and bird, reptile and sea creature can be tamed and has been tamed by the human species, but no one can tame the tongue, a restless evil full of deadly poison. With it, we bless the Lord and Father, and with it we curse those who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessings and cursings. My brothers and sisters, this ought not to be so. Does a spring pour forth the same, oh, from the same opening both fresh and brackish water? Can a fig tree, my brothers and sisters, yield olives? Or a grapevine, figs? No more can salt water yield fresh. The Spirit speaks to the church today. Thanks. For days without a break, Jesus has fed the multitudes, healed the sick, cured the demon possessed, and confronted the Pharisees, all while de dealing with his seemingly clueless disciples. Now Jesus is taking a little time off in the Gentile region of Tyre and Sidon. Far from home, surely he will be able to get a break. Mark chapter 7, starting at the 24th verse. From there he set out and went to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want to, anyone to know he was there. Yet he could not escape notice. But a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him, and she came and bowed down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile of Syrophoenician origin. She begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, Let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, Sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he said to her, For saying that you may go, the demon has left your daughter. 
So she went home, found the child lying on the bed, and the demon gone. Then he returned to the region of Tyre and went by way of Sidon toward the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. He brought to him a de they brought to him a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech, and they begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him aside in private, away from the crowd, and put his fingers in his ears and spat and touched his tongue. Then, looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ephphatha, that is, be opened. And immediately his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered them not to tell, to tell no one, but the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were astounded beyond measure, saying, He has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Have you ever wanted to slip into somewhere and make yourself not known? Maybe you run into the grocery store in your casual sweatpants after dropping off your children at school. Or you went to a restaurant hoping for a quiet date with your spouse. You just want to be somewhere where no one knows your name. Jesus is in need of a break. Everywhere he turns, someone needs him. Like the hemorrhaging woman who touches the hem of his garment and all his power flows out of him. Then we hear that wherever he went, into villages or the town or the countryside, they placed the sick in the marketplaces and begged Jesus to touch them, even the edge of his cloak. All who touched it were healed. We can assume then that he is completely exhausted, mentally, physically, and spiritually. In addition to the needy people, all of his actions are upsetting the religious authorities. They are calling into question his integrity as they try to silence him. No matter, no wonder why he wants to put a little distance between himself and the people. Jesus turns the key to his beachfront vacation villa. He walks inside. He sinks down in the easy chair facing the picture window with a full view of the Mediterranean Sea. He closes his eyes and breathes a sigh of relief. There isn't the possibility of texting or someone tagging him on Facebook, so surely he can travel incognito. As it turns out, though, hearing the news of Jesus' power through the grapevine, through the word of mouth, went from village to village and town to town. It was just as effective. All of a sudden, the door swings open and a woman barges in. Jesus, she says, with a tone of desperation in her voice, she kneels down in front of him. Please heal my daughter. She has been possessed by a demon. Looking down at her, Jesus tries to dismiss her with words that make us cringe. Let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. Whoa, Jesus did not just go there. Insulting her with a derogatory slur, Jesus makes clear that his mission is for the Jews and the Jews only. This foreigner and her, her daughter are not a priority. The woman has crossed some firm boundaries in the first place. She's a woman and she's a Gentile and she's on the wrong side of the tracks. She's speaking to him in a private place, which was also unheard of. It is not proper for her in any way, shape, or form to approach Jesus and engage him in conversation. Still, it's entirely out of character for Jesus, and we are shocked at what we hear. We try to excuse it or justify it in some way. Okay, you want to do metaphors? The woman says, I can do metaphors. Sir, even the dogs under the table get the children's crumbs. I have one little Gentile girl here. You've got enough healing power to go around. It's a brilliant response. This is the Messiah, after all, who eats at a table with tax collectors and breaks bread with sinners. 
It is at the table where Jesus shows the world who God is. Where is my place at the table, the outsider asks. Where is my good news? Surely there is enough to share. This woman, like many mothers in our day and time, will do anything and everything to relieve the suffering of her child. So Jesus seems to have a change of heart, a kind of conversion moment where he's reconnected to his mission and his vocation. The barriers of prejudice is broken. Compassion breaks through. He understands the wisdom of her words and commends her for speaking out. As Barbara Brown Taylor puts it, you can almost hear the huge wheel of history turning as Jesus comes to a new understanding of who he is and what he is called to do. Then he proceeds through Gentile territory. Jesus is presented with a deaf man with impediment in his speech. Being deaf in the first century wasn't just about not hearing or speaking clearly, but such disabilities would have been considered a consequence of sin. He would have been on the fringes of society with very low social status. Raising his eyes to heaven, Jesus sighs. Maybe he was saying, okay, Father, I get it, as he orders his ears to be opened and his tongue released. More than restoring his hearing, Jesus also restores him to community, changing this man's life forever. What do we make of these stories, especially that the Seraphonician woman? While there are many possibilities, one that makes most sense to me is that the Jesus we encounter in this story is showing his humanness. He's shaped by his culture, including the conscious and unconscious biases. He's also very tired. Yet he's also God incarnate. We may not know how these two aspects work together. It would only be natural, it would seem, that he's still working out his divine vocation. Our rally day theme for today is God's love is for everyone. What is illustrated in this story is this very thing. A Gentile girl possessed with the demonic forces, much like horrible mental illnesses that some suffer with today, would be considered worthless. A deaf man with a speech impediment would have been blamed for his condition, yet both were eventually healed and embraced by God's love and compassion. There are no external barriers between God and ourselves, not race, class, ethnicity, gender, age, or physical condition can separate us from God's love. Likewise, these barriers can, cannot be erected between us and our neighbor. We too need to allow ourselves to be opened to the full and sometimes uncomfortable implications of the gospel. The new book for our Matthew 25 book group is, is called White Too Long, The Legacy of White Supremacy in American Christianity by Robert P. Jones. Noting how deeply racist attitudes have become embedded in the DNA of white Christian identity throughout history, this book, as you can imagine, is very difficult to read. Only by confronting these truths, however, can we work toward repair and charting a better way forward. Sometimes, like Jesus, we feel all tapped out. We are exhausted by the constant news feeds listing one disaster or tragedy after another. I was reflecting with one of my friends the other day about 9-11, how we both were glued to the TVs in the days following that tragic event. We almost felt guilty about continuing on with our lives when so many were suffering. After a while, though, it began to wear us down. We are human and sometimes we reach our limits. We need to tune out for a while, to walk in nature, to recalibrate ourselves, to spend time with our children and families. There's no way to respond to every need and request put before us. What we are invited by God to do though, once recharged, is to open our eyes and ears to see where God might be leading us. Next month, we are hoping to introduce an educational series that we hope everyone will attend as part of our commitment to being a Matthew 25 church. 
Our first speaker on the evening of October 24th is Dr. Rick's, Rick Axtell, a professor from Center College who will give an overview of poverty and homelessness with an emphasis on what's going on here in Louisville. His thesis is that effective action requires analysis that takes seriously both systemic structural factors like employment, dynamics, low wages, housing, and healthcare costs, and also personal and behavior factors, including addiction and dropping out of school, among others. From talking to him when planning this series, he is passionate about the topic, and I know he will be a very engaging speaker. The task force putting together this series selected the name A Place at the Table. It reflects at least three levels of meaning. First, as Christians we pray, give us this day our daily bread. We believe that every one of God's people is worthy of adequate nutrition, both physical and spiritual. Second, as Presbyterians, our communion table is open to all. Third, we believe that the poor and oppressed should have a place at the table when policies and procedures and legislation important to their lives are discussed and negotiated. In today's anthem, For Everyone Born, you will hear these words. For everyone born, a place at the table, clean water and bread, a shelter, a space, a safe place for growing. For everyone born, a place at the table, to live without fear, to simply to be, to work, to speak out, to witness, and worship for everyone born the right to be free. May we all be opened to the widening of the table, to expanding our love beyond all barriers, and to the realization that our love, like God's love, should be for everyone born into this life. It's a challenging goal and sometimes we are worn out. We act out of impulse and initially get it wrong. But each day is a new day and a new opportunity to serve. God will truly delight when we become co-creators of compassion, peace, justice, and joy. Amen. Let us now affirm what we believe using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated.
Bom dia. Bom dia. Bom dia. There we go. I'd be remiss in not mentioning that in Portuguese because we've got a Brazilian flag flying in that cluster there, so it's always good. Please join, join me in the prayer for the people and of the people. Let us pray to the Lord, saying, God of love, and responding with, hear our prayer. We're in prayer for Kelsey Dodden and for baby Perry Dodden, and the continued recovery of Brooks and Jimmy. God of love, hear we're in prayer for Marilyn Anderson, God of love, we offer a prayer of gratitude for the presence of our Judy Long. God of love, hear our prayer. We're in prayer for the people and situations that you name now. For our friend. I would like to include uh, Rebecca Carey, my cousin who's battling brain cancer. For your sister Barbara. For Jane. God of love. Hear our prayer. Let us pray for the church, the nations, and all people seeking God's mercy and care, saying, God of love, hear our prayer. We pray for the church in every place that wherever people gather in your name, you make us able to listen to each other with open hearts. Give your people unity, O God, and replace divisiveness with reconciliation. God of love, hear our prayer. We pray for all who serve the church as musicians, ushers, greeters, pastors, session members, deacons, teachers, and student leaders, as architects and cooks, as repairers and cleaners in all our ministry. God of love, hear our prayer. We pray for Muslims and Jews, Hindus and Buddhists, people of indigenous religions everywhere, that their paths may, may lead with ours to greater understanding of the goodness of faith in its many languages and forms. God of love, we thank you for this amazing earth, for clean water, rich soils, abundant sunshine, and all the foods that you have made for our health and enjoyment. Give all people the gratitude to share, especially those who do not have such riches and who today are hungry. God of love, we pray for the leaders of our nation, for our president, Joseph Biden, and members of Congress for the leaders asserting power in other nations, for nations in trouble at this time, such as Haiti and Afghanistan, and for peacemakers and diplomats as they work to shape a reformed people. God of love, hear our prayer. We pray for all who suffer from the horrors of war and famine. On this tragic 20th anniversary, we remember 9-11 O oh Lord, and pray for all those who lost loved ones, for children who do not know the reason for their pain and have no power to change their lot, and for animals and plants damaged by human conflicts and greed. God of love, hear our prayer. We pray for those suffering from all forms of injustice, brokenness, or illness, especially all 
who have asked for the prayers of this congregation and for those whose well-being we hold in our hearts. Name now, aloud, or silent. God of love, God of eternity, certain days remind us of tragedy and death, but we know that all days are redeemed and held in your grace. We remember those who died on this day and those who will die today and all those lives have enriched ours. God of love, keep alive in us the hope of the resurrection. God of love, into your hands we command those for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We will not be passing offering plates today, but I invite you to give an offering on your way out of the door in the wooden box on the table. As we offer the gifts of our life and labor to the Lord, remember these words. Do good and share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God.
gracious God, we thank you for the measure of faith you have given to each one of us. Increase in us generosity, compassion, and the prophetic courage so that we may continue to be your body in and for the world. With thanksgiving, we pray in the name of Christ, who said when you pray to God, pray like this. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us as, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our final hymn is, O for a Thousand Tongues to Sing. serve the Lord, remembering that God's love is for everyone. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's kindness and graciousness be radiant within you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.